Hello everybody, welcome back. This dresser I picked up from Facebook at Marketplace and it was a good hour drive each way and I messaged the guy selling it and I said, if there is no smell, I will take it. I got there, there was a smell, I had just driven an hour. Uh, I wasn't happy, but I bought it anyway. This poor dresser is in pretty rough shape. It's got some beautiful veneer under that crappy finish, but some pretty terrible stink, so wish me luck. My name is Angie and I refinish furniture. Sometimes I paint and sometimes I don't, but I always do what I can to save old pieces from the trash. Welcome to my workroom. Okay, let's have a good look at this. The smell that I'm mentioning is, it smells slightly like cigarettes, but the overwhelming smell is just that old musty smell as if they had sit in a barn for a while. And actually that's where we picked it out from. So this has been unloved for some time. As you can see, the finish is failing everywhere, pretty much. One good thing I have to say about this piece, though, is that it is quite sturdy. Like, everything fits nice and tightly. There's no loose joints or anything like that that I can tell off the bat, anyway. There are quite a few areas on the front where the walnut veneer has chipped off, or is chipping off. It does have a beautiful veneer on the front, but I'm not sure what it's going to look like once we get all this finish off and make the repairs. I don't believe these are the original top handles. I know these lower ones are original, but we'll figure that out too as well. Looking at the back of the piece, I can tell the top is a piece of solid wood, but there is a layer of veneer on top of that. And it only has two of its original four casters, so I'll either have to replace all four, replace two of them, or just leave them off entirely. I already know this is going to be one of those <laughs> wing it as you go along restorations. I don't know yet if I'm going to completely restore this, if I'm going to paint part of it, we'll see as we go along. I'm not entirely sure what this hardware is made of. I'm thinking it's brass or some sort of brass. I see a little bit of green oxidization and I know that brass is usually copper and zinc mixed together, but it's so tarnished and dirty it's hard to tell. These top poles I know aren't original, but I'm going to hang on to them. I may be able to use them. I need to start deodorizing this piece and to get the ball rolling I need to make sure this is nice and clean. So I'm vacuuming out all of the cobwebs and dust and probably mildew spores. And this took quite a while to do. This was a pretty dirty piece. Like I said, this literally came from a barn. There are so many different ways to deal with stinky pieces and I run into it quite a lot on my channel. Sometimes vinegar and sunlight is all it needs. Sometimes you need harsher chemicals. There are actual primers you can spray on that block odors. I've heard people using baking soda and coffee grinds and so many different things. Side note here, as I pulled these off, I noticed they were different. So one of them, this one here, I believe is the original because it's wooden and the other one is metal. So these aren't even a match set. I may end up leaving the casters off altogether. I'm going to be using a couple of different methods to try to get this clean because they kept not working. <laughs> so first thing I did was wash the entire piece in and out with cleaning vinegar, which is a stronger solution than just regular household vinegar. A word of caution when using vinegar on antique and vintage pieces. I try not to flood the area with the vinegar. A lot of times they used hide glue or brown glue when putting these pieces together and vinegar will actually disintegrate that glue. So you want to be careful not to get too much vinegar around glue blocks and places where the joints are. Now, uh, trigger warning here if you're afraid of spiders. <laughs> There's a little guy who somehow managed to escape the vacuuming. So. I'm going to try to convince him to leave. He was putting up a little bit of a fuss, so he ended up with an eviction notice, and he was promptly removed. I try not to kill spiders when I find them in furniture. They're just out there living their lives. <laughs> we don't have anything poisonous here in Nova Scotia, so I don't have to worry about that aspect of it. So I'm leaving these out in the sun to bake now for a few hours. 
In the meantime, I'm going to go in and get to work on some of the hardware. And if you saw my community post the other day about the hardware, I think this is where things took a turn for me. Normally, I have no issues putting hardware in vinegar to just sort of clean them up. There was a change that occurred, a chemical change, and I'll show you that later. What I'm doing here, once these have thoroughly dried from the vinegar, I'm bringing them inside and I'm finally getting to use this. This was a gift, I believe, from Emma from my Amazon wish list. And this is an ozone, it says ozone air purifier, but it's an ozone machine. Keep in mind, ozone is very dangerous for humans, pets, and even plants. So you do not want to be in the room while this is running. You don't want to have pets or kids <laughs> running around and you want to remove any house plants. These little machines take oxygen, O2, and turn it into ozone, which is O3. O3 is a pretty unstable gas and it wants to get back to being O2. So what it does is it attaches itself to things like odors and mold spores and oxidizes them. That's the very, very general description of what happens. So what I'm doing here is I'm just putting it in a central location. I'm setting the dial for 40 minutes to start just to see how that goes, but it's not plugged in yet. I'm just arranging these around so that most of it hopefully stays in this general area instead of going through the whole room. And thanks to my Buy Me A Coffee supporters, I bought this box fan, which is going to come in handy with the aftermath of this. So when I'm ready to go, I plug it in, immediately leave the room lock my garage door, and set my timer for 40 minutes. Once it's done, I open the garage from the outside. I let the big door open first, gave it a few minutes, came in, unplugged it, immediately plugged in the fan and turned it on, blowing out the door, and then ran out of the <laughs> garage. <laughs> and then I went and did something else for a few hours. After about four hours, most of the ozone smell had dissipated from the room, and it smells a little bit like chlorine. I was disheartened to discover that it hadn't completely taken away the smell. It did improve it, but I decided to run another cycle. So this time I put it on for the max amount, which is, I believe, two hours, and did the same process over again. Once the room was clear again, I came back in. This had been sitting the whole time in the vinegar, so I took a nylon bristle brush and cleaned it up. It had changed color slightly. It had gone from sort of old tarnished brass to this pretty almost rose gold color a little bit more of the copper showing through and it might have been the vinegar that did that <laughs> we're finally ready to get into getting this finish off these are tools that i normally use when sharpening things like my chisels and my scrapers in this case i'm only going to be using a couple of these things i won't need the honing comp compound i use that more for chisels but basically what i do i'm going to take this apart this is my cardboid tipped scraper and it has two blades technically on there's one on each side so when one gets dull you can flip it around and either replace it or sharpen it I like to try to get the most out of my tools so I'm going to sharpen it and then these are my other two scrapers which also have two edges and I'm going to sharpen these in the exact same way there's a couple of different ways to do this if you have a wheel a grinding wheel you can use that with a little bit of um, there's a special type of oil, sometimes you can use water. I'm gonna show you the two ways I like to do it. Usually I'll start off with the 400 on my diamond stone. You wanna make sure that you're pulling the blade at the exact angle that it's cut. But this is actually my favorite way to do it and it's just with a simple file. You make sure the file is flat against the blade and you just sort of brush it like this and what that's gonna do, it's gonna create a burr on the underside. And then I would use my 1000 grit diamond stone here to just take that burr off. I'm going to do that to both sides and then I'm ready to put the scraper back together. I'm just cleaning up, there was a little bit of um, gunk from stripper the last time I used this. You just want to make sure that your blade is completely straight when you put this on. Sometimes it can go crooked on you, so really take a moment and do this part correctly. See, I just had to do a little adjustment there and this is good to go. And I sharpened it exactly the same way with my other ones. I like to wipe the handles off as well when I do this, kind of refresh them all around and these are good to go. 
Now the last time I used my carabide tip scraper, you can see here it was a little bit of a struggle. Now granted this finish was a bit thicker, but you see how narrow the path is? as I'm pulling, that's usually indicative of a fairly dull blade. And sometimes they come from the factory like this. Look at the difference here. <laughs> so this is one I just sharpened. I'm getting almost the full width of the blade. So this is going to go a lot faster. Sharpening your blades is a great way to save money. You can usually do it several times before you need a new blade. There are lots of videos on how to sharpen things like scrapers and chisels. For chisels in particular and tools like planers, I would recommend watching a dedicated video just on how to do that because it can be kind of complicated. For my scrapers though, usually I just use that diamond plate and a file and that's quick and easy. I am very excited to see this beautiful walnut wood grain hidden under all that old finish. I already know though from having worked on pieces like this before that the decorative edge around the top is probably a different type of wood. And you can see there's a bit of a water stain there. I'm hoping that won't be an issue. The side panels are also walnut. And yep, here, just as I thought, these legs are not the same type of wood. Oh, and we have another escapee. He is also getting evicted. That's the thing about these old pieces, and nobody really likes to talk about it. And these are just spiders, but sometimes when you're picking up furniture, you have to really look it over because there are so many cracks and crevices where little spiders and not-so-nice things can hide. So I'm grateful that I have a bit of a buffer here with my garage. Furniture doesn't immediately come into my house, and to be honest, of the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pieces I've done over the last however many years, I've never personally run into bed bugs. I did go to pick up a piece once and I opened the drawer and there was a dead cockroach in it. That was enough for me. That was close enough. <laughs> I was not bringing that home. It happens. You have to be really careful, especially with pieces that are left on the side of the road. Now this set of carved scrapers is going to really help me with this trim along the edge. This is end grain here on the side and that's from the slabs of wood that are underneath the veneer on the top. I am scraping against the grain here and that's generally not recommended. You can see here on the front when I'm scraping with the grain, it's nice and smooth, easy peasy, but you really have to be careful on those sides. You could use a stripper to clean off the end grain. I don't mind scraping it with these tools. I just, I go very gently and it's gonna end up sanded down anyway. But yeah, just make a note, that scenario is pretty much the only time I will scrape against the grain with scraper. I know this is a bit of a longer video. I was <laughs> trying to figure out how I could shrink this down, but in all honesty, this piece took me days longer than I expected. So sometimes I don't mind skipping through things as I'm doing videos, but in this case, I wanted to show all of these things like sharpening the tools and the detail work here on the trim, etc. And I also have a fun little surprise for you from a couple weekends ago when I did my bunny fundraiser. So normally I once a year do a tattoo fundraiser for the bunnies where I come up with a bunch of different designs and we start at 9am and go till 9pm and I try to do as many little tattoos as I can and I donate all of the money to the bunny rescue that I help with. So I don't want to take up too much of the video with that but I will show you a few clips here of that event. So normally all of this is done inside my shop, but where I have a smaller shop now, we decided to do this part outside. So we had tables set up with all kinds of yard sale items, really cute bunny things, jewelry and giftware and stuff like that to sell, as well as some pet supplies and toys. But as always, the main event is the tattoos. And that is the tattoo line. We sold out all of our tattoo slots for the day within 15 minutes. 
and because of that I added five extra tattoo slots for the next day. So in total over the two days I did 26 cute little tattoos like this. I was very excited to tell the bunnies that we raised $3,000 in the tattoo fundraiser itself. That's a good chunk of change for the bunny rescue. I'm super happy about that. And I hope you enjoyed this little rescue bunny intermission. I still have a ton of work to do on this piece, so let's get back at it. I have no idea what that flapping thing is on my sander, but as I'm watching this back, I'm cringing and I want to pull it out. I'm starting off here using a 180 grit sand pad on my surf prep. I chose to use my surf prep over my DeWalt sander for this piece just so that I was able to get up into the corners on the sides as well as some of the framework inside. I don't normally sand inside pieces when I'm working on them but in this case I need to seal as much of the wood as I can with an odor blocking primer and you'll see that in a bit so just giving this a bit of a sanding on the inside is going to prep me for that. By this point, and I think this was around the end of day two, I'm starting to get a pretty good idea of what I want to do here. So I'm thinking I'm going to be painting the legs and trying to salvage the rest of the wood grain if I can. So that's the top, the sides, and the drawer faces. So I'm adding this soft sort of spongy interface here on my surf prep so that I can scuff sand around these details on the legs nice about this is it, it does scuff it properly for prepping for paint but it doesn't take off a whole lot of material so it's not going to flatten those rounded edges. I'm also going to be using an odor blocking primer on the back so I'm sanding that very lightly as well. If you're wondering why I'm going through all of that hassle the ozone machine, it took, I'd say, about 80% of the smell out, but there's still just a little bit, so I am going to have to use some of my uh, odor blocking primer. That's okay. I'm told the ozone machines are great on cigarette smoke, so maybe it's better suited to that. I don't know. The next time I get a smoky piece, I will try it again. Time to open up this new pack of putty knives. This is from Greg from Amazon Wishlist, so thank you so much for these, Greg. I'm going to be using the little one here just to push off a little bit of this quick wood. This is a wood epoxy and basically you cut off what you need and you just knead it in between your fingers until it's one consistent color. And my apologies here, my camera decided that my foot was more important than what I'm doing so it was focusing on that instead. But all I'm doing is reshaping this corner where there was a chunk of wood that had come off. This stuff dries extremely hard so as long as it's applied properly it shouldn't come off. And for the rest of these little marks, I'll just use some walnut wood fill. Here's where I'm using that odor blocking primer I mentioned. This is going to do two things. It's going to seal the wood before I paint it and it's also literally going to block any odors. So I use this on all of the areas I was going to paint as well as the entire inside of the piece and the back. Once that had dried I went in with 220 grit sandpaper on my surf prep to finish the sides and the top. And then I can finally get to work on the drawers and there's quite a bit of work to be done here. The first thing I have to do here is carefully strip off the old finish, taking great care not to damage further any of this veneer. This is probably the worst spot on the three drawers. 
And I would replace this entire strip, but I don't have a compatible piece of veneer that's going to match that close enough. So I'm going to have to sort of patchwork it. But first I'm just going to take all of the finish off. Scraping veneer pieces like this is difficult when they're all in different directions. And you can see I actually nicked a little bit there. You can see I'm trying to come in at a little bit of an angle so I'm not pulling straight down on the veneer. Okay, so I have a million little pieces of veneer scraps that I picked up from a guy on Facebook Marketplace. But I'm not sure if I have anything that's going to work. I'm not 100% sure what this top one is. It's not quite big enough anyway. That one's promising. I've got some burl. Different types of walnut. This one would be good, except that it's not long enough. <laughs> And this one is long enough, but it's not quite the right, the right piece. So on these sections, I'm going to have to patch it in. And on these ones, I think I'm going to use a wood filler and then actually paint on the wood grain. <laughs> we'll start with the top drawer and patching these little areas. The first thing I did, of course, was to make sure that the rest of the veneer was glued down and solid. A lot of times when you have a chip like this, the veneer next to it is loose, so always check that before you start patching anything. Using fusion mineral paint in the color coal black and this awesome little brush here to paint the legs and the front trim. Everything else is going to remain wood, <laughs> at least that's the plan at this point. I think this was actually right around the time I posted on my community page here on YouTube that things were taking longer than expected, so. This was where I was at at this point. It's just, it took so long to try to get the piece to stop stinking, <laughs> that it just it sent me back a couple of days. You really want to be careful when you're painting around where the drawers go in. Sometimes if the drawers are super tight, putting paint there is going to make them sort of stick. So make sure your drawers are loose enough or sand them back slightly if you're going to paint there. I'm going through my caster collection here. <laughs> These ones are kind of promising. They're all wood casters and I have a set of four of them. The problem is the insert, I'm not sure exactly what it's called. It's a different shape and it's too long. So rather than deal with that, I'm just gonna keep looking. It doesn't look like I have enough of what I'm looking for. So I'm gonna skip the casters. Wanted to say thank you to both Steve and Gail who each sent me a box of nitro gloves. Definitely a shop must, so thanks so much for those. Quite often when I'm dealing with walnut, I just like to clear coat it, but because I'm trying to match this wood here on the sides, which is a different type of wood, I'm actually going to be staining all of the walnut with this General Finishes gel stain in the color Antique Walnut. And my hope with that is that I'm going to have a more consistent tone. I already know that I'm probably going to need to use a toner on top of this. But for now, I'm just staining everything and I'm starting with the edges because they are the lightest. So I want the stain to sit on those <laughs> the longest. This is where you will really start to see things come together a little bit.
Now it's quite clear here how much redder the sides are than the top, even though they're both walnut, they're slightly different. So I will address that shortly. Dealing with these filled areas here on the top drawer is a little bit complicated. So first I just need to make sure I get this all sanded smooth. And then I actually have to seal the wood filler. So I'm opting to actually use this vinyl sealer on first on just the filled part and then on the entire drawer itself. So the filled areas will have basically two coats of sealer on it. And while that's drying, I need to figure out these patches. This is going to be hard. For this one, I'm going to cut a long triangular patch and remove all of the loose veneer here. I'm just sanding this down to make sure there's no old wood glue on there and I need to cut a little piece of wood epoxy here for this corner because I don't want to have a piece of veneer unsupported so I'm just going to build up this corner the same way I built up the other one, let it dry and then once that's dry I'll come in and put my veneer patch down. Now on the other drawer I found out what was causing the problem in the front and this dovetail has cracked and this whole piece of wood is moving. So it caused the veneer to split on the front. So before I do any more work on the veneer, I need to make sure this is secure. And I could use a glue syringe or a number of tools. In this case, the gap was actually wide enough that I could just keep pushing it in with my finger. And I actually put quite a bit of glue in that joint. So once I felt like there was enough glue, I just wiped off the excess, added my clamps, and you can see a nice glue squeeze out there when I tightened the first one. And then I just popped a second one on and set that aside to dry. Back now to the other drawer, I'm sanding that little corner patch, and I think that's going to do nicely to help support the veneer in that corner. Just before I glue that up, I'm going to lightly sand the rest of the drawer. There will still be one more sanding after the glue up. This is 180 and I'll finish with a 220. This is the little piece that I cut off for my patch here. And I know it's a different color and slightly different grain, but I think that I can get this close enough. It's this is one of those projects, it's not going to be perfect. I have to already accept that in my head. I don't want someone to look at the piece and have it immediately stand out, but you know, if they're up close looking at it and they say, oh, that's a different type of wood or that's a different grain, that's okay. I just, I needed this piece not to end up in the, in the garbage. <laughs> that's the main goal. And to be honest, that's probably where this piece would have ended up. All right, it's time to carefully lay this on. I cut it a little bit longer than necessary so that I could slide it up or down as needed and there's also a little bit of an overhang on the side. It's always better to have a little extra than to cut it absolutely precise and for some reason it not working out properly. Once I have it where I want it, I'm going to tape it in place just to make sure it doesn't move. 
and then I will add a wood block and clamp this down and let it dry overnight. Now it is time to do some faux wood graining on these patches on the top drawer. I'm using these mohawk graining markers and this is always a bit of a process. It's you kind of have to build up the color. It's not quite like using a sharpie where one color is going to get it. There's often multiple layers and what I sometimes do is I'll, I'll draw it on and immediately wipe it back which kind of softens it. And again this isn't going to be perfect. I just need this passable. <laughs> Okay, time to have a look at patch number one. This is the long triangular one. I'm actually just using scissors to trim the edge a little bit and I'll refine that later. And then I just have this blade. You can get actual veneer trimmers that will do this a lot more quickly. <laughs> but I just use this blade. It works for me. And I'm just gonna keep trimming it until it's completely flush with the side. There's a couple little holes here and there. So I will fill those with some wood filler. And this is the patch on number two. And you can see there's a little strip missing from the side. I accidentally tore it. So I'm gonna add a new piece on after. <laughs> this drawer is the gift that just keeps on giving. Ideally, I would have just replaced this whole strip, but I just didn't have enough of that particular veneer to do so. It's okay, <laughs> I'm gonna make the best of it. I'm going to add some vinyl sealer to this drawer with the triangular patch. Now you may have noticed with the top I just went ahead and stained it. I didn't seal it first. The reason I'm sealing this one first is because of that veneer patch. I need to make sure that one type of wood isn't absorbing it more so than the other type. Now this is a toner. I'm going to be using this on the top as well as the drawer faces. This is going to help all those different wood tones and wood colors become similar in tone. It's not going to make them the exact same color unless I use a ton of it. That's not my goal. I just want to make sure that even though this will have varying tones and wood grains and colors that it is cohesive if that makes sense. Once the toner has completely dried, I'm going to be using Mohawk's pre-cut lacquer. And the reason I'm using lacquer on this versus like Odie's Oil, which is one of my favorite products, I used quite a bit of toner and graining markers and the lacquer is just going to give me a nice finish without disturbing any of that. I sprayed a total of four coats of lacquer all over the wood grain.
my gosh, home stretch, you guys. So this is the hardware as it looked when it was cleaned, and these are two types of spray paint that I have. I'm gonna be using these on these two pieces, which were not original to the piece. Someone had put them on at some point. So I'm gonna start off with the rose gold color and just spray it all around, let that dry for a moment, and then I'm gonna just splash on some of that gold color. While I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm gonna go in with this Fusion uh, Beeswax Hemp Oil Combo and seal my paint. Fusion technically has a built-in top coat. I just like to use this because you can see here, it just really deepens the color and that's more what I'm after. You guys, you made it. We're at an almost 40 minute video here. Having a look back at what I started with, even though I paid actual money for this piece, I probably shouldn't have. It's not a piece that many people would have taken on and it, the likelihood of this being trashed was pretty high. So I'm super happy with how this came out. I wasn't sure when I began where I was going with it, but hopefully you like it. Please go ahead and give this video a thumbs up if you like what you see here. And if you enjoy this sort of content, consider subscribing. I try to put out a video a week. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.